So, I just got a call from Charlie. You guys know him. His boss asked him to create a title animation for a TV show. Poor Charlie accepted the challenge, but he doesn't know how to animate in Premiere. If he doesn't deliver, he's gonna lose his job and I can't let that happen. So let's launch Premiere and start typing some text. First, go to the toolbar and click the text tool. Head over to the program monitor and type in Premiere, for example. Now we're gonna make this entire animation inside this graphic layer. And to do that, go to the window menu on top and then choose Essential Graphics. Here you can see the text we just created. I also typed the word basic and as you can see, this created a second layer. With the selection tool, select the text layer you want to edit. Then rescale and reposition them to your liking. Now let's start animating. I want the text to come in from the middle, so to do that, go to the effects library and find the crop effect. Drag it on top of the premiere layer. This means the crop effect will work on every layer below it. Click the crop effect. Now in the program monitor, drag the bottom line to the middle, right underneath the text. Next, go back to the effects library and find the transform effect. Drag it in between the crop effect and the text layer. Then go to the effect controls and find transform. Go to the position property and find the lower text so that it becomes invisible. Click the stopwatch icon to set a keyframe. Then move a little forward in time and bring the text back up. To make the animation smooth, right click the last keyframe and choose temporal interpolation. Then click ease in. Of course, don't forget to increase the shutter angle as well. That will introduce the motion blur. Are you following Charlie? Ah, that's great buddy. Let's continue. Hey, where's the word basics? It actually disappeared and that is because the crop and transform effect also affects the basic layer. We only want this to work on the premiere layer. To do that, hold control and select all the layers except for basics. Then click on the folder icon. Now the effect will only work on the layers that are inside this folder. Of course, rename the folder so you can stay organized. Follow the exact same steps for the second layer and now the animation looks like this. Next, before the text gets filled up, I want the outline of the text to show first. To do that, duplicate both text layers, but make sure that they are in the same folder. The first one will be the outlined one, so you can disable the second one for now. Hold control and select both the text layers. Scroll down and disable the fill, then enable the stroke. Set the thickness to something around 5 or whatever works for you. Of course, make sure the outline is white. Now we're gonna animate it so that the fill appears. Go to the effect browser and find the crop effect. Drag it in between the two text layers because we only want this to work on the fill. You can make it visible again if you want. Click the crop effect and go to the effect controls. Then click the crop again and drag the right property so that nothing is selected. Then set a keyframe. Move one frame further in time and make sure the fill is visible in the first letter. Keep doing this until the word premiere is entirely visible. That looks amazing. By the way, these animations are nothing without music and sound effects. I actually found some crazy ones on audio which I'm definitely saving. Oh, and they're also sponsoring this video. You can easily find thousands of songs and sound effects. All you need to do is type in whatever you need and bam, there you go. Every song and sound effect in this video comes from audio. There are insane discounts going on at the moment, so please don't miss out on this. The plans you can choose from are extremely affordable compared to other libraries, and that without sacrificing the quality. With the music filters like mood, genre, instrument, I always find the right track for my videos in no time. And when I find a song that I like, I simply add it to my playlist. Also, don't worry about copyright strikes or licensing issues, audio will take care of that. If you're making any type of content and want to take things serious, audio is literally everything you need. So check out the audio by clicking the link down below. Back to the text animation. For the second text layer we're gonna do something crazy. Or should I say wavy. We're literally gonna fill the letters up with waves. First, go to the toolbar and click the rectangle icon. Then in the program monitor, create a box underneath the text. Make sure it's big enough to cover it completely. Then in the essential graphics panel, scroll down to the fill color and change it to white. Then just click OK. Now go back to the layers and drag the shape underneath the basics text. Go to the effect browser and find the wave warp effect. Drag it in between the shape and the text layer. Now head over to the effect controls and find the wave width. Change it to something around 140 to make it look more real we're gonna animate the height. Increase it to around 40. Now click the stopwatch icon to create a keyframe and move further in time. Then decrease the height to something around 10. Of course, don't forget to ease in the last keyframe. You know, make it smooth. Next, we're gonna animate the shape up so that it covers up the text. Go to the effect controls and find the position property. Create a position keyframe and move further in time. Then cover up the text like this. To make the text appear again, we're gonna use it as a mask. Select the text in the layers list and scroll down to the bottom. Here you will find an option to mask with text. Once it's enabled, the animation will look like this. Awesome. How's it going, Charlie? Hey, you're still downloading music from audio. I know, audio is awesome, but please pay attention. You don't want to lose your job, right? All right, let's get back to Premiere. So, I want the Premiere tool icons to appear in between the text, but to do that, we need to make some space. Select the Premiere group and head over to the effect controls. We already have the transform effect on this clip, so we're gonna use this one again. Simply copy the last keyframe and move further in time, and then just paste it. Move a little forward again and move the text up. Do the same thing 
waiting for the second text layer, but of course this time move the text down. In the project window, drag the icons in the graphics panel. And yes, one by one, because Premiere doesn't allow us to move multiple files at the same time. Fix that Adobe, please. Now with the selection tool enabled, simply readjust the scale and position to make them fit in between the text. Now it's time to animate them. Go to the effect browser and find the basic 3D effect. Drag it on top of the pen tool. And again, we only want this effect to work on the pen tool. Select both of them and click the folder. There we go. Go to the effect controls and find the tilt property. Create a keyframe and set it to minus 90 to make it disappear. Move further in time and set it to a little over zero. That way it leans backwards. Then move forward again and set it back to a little under zero. Move forward one last time and now set it to zero. Of course, don't forget to ease your keyframes. Now it looks like the icon is bubbling out from the tilt movement. Next, make sure all the other icons are inside a folder as well. Then copy the basic 3D effect and paste them in all of them. If it's done, the animation will look like this. It looks okay, but I do have another trick up my sleeve. Select the basic 3D effect in the essential graphics. That effect will also be selected in the effect control so that you don't have to find it. To finish off the animation, we're gonna offset the tilt effect. And to do that, set the play at on the first keyframe of the tilt animation. Move two frames forward with the arrow right key on your keyboard, select the keyframes of the second tilt effect and snap them to the play at. Move forward again and do the same thing for all the other icons. That looks amazing. And oh, remember the sound effects from audio? Well, simply drag them underneath the animation and poof, we're done. There you go, Charlie. I knew you could do it. Wait, what? Premiere's about to crash? We can't let that happen. Making animations can be very heavy for your computer, so to make sure that Premiere doesn't crash, simply make it faster by clicking the video here on my left. So, thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay creative.